many things to share today. I'm so excited. Oh, I just saw that somebody guessed. So if you guys have any guesses too on what the pixel art or what the virtual sticker board might be, you can put it into the chat as well. But we're so happy to have you here today for our first webinar for Stick Together for the new year. And we hope everybody is having just a great new year. It's crazy to think that half of the month is already over. And we just took our youngest one back to college yesterday after being home for a month. And it felt like it was a few days that he was home. And so it goes so fast, but we're glad that you took the time today, wherever you are to join us for this webinar. As you come in, we have a great chat going on and you can put where you're from. And if you want to say anything about the weather and how it's going, please feel free to use the chat today as a place that we can connect and talk and ask questions and share things because we really want this to be all about you too. So we're grateful that you came today. But today we're excited because we get to talk about using Stick Together and also how we can use it to bring nonfiction to life. And I couldn't be more excited to have my friend Tom on the webinar, and we're going to hear from him in a few minutes. But first, I wanted to put up the bit.ly for today, also a QR code if you would rather scan it. And Bree has also put it into the chat. And so you'll want to get this because there'll be lots of resources that we share that you can use too within your own school and your library and your community. And so you can grab that and we'll share that too at the end. And so really helpful to have this. So you have all of the ideas that we use, but I'm excited to be here today. Um, my name is Shannon McClintock Miller. I am the district teacher librarian at Van Meter Community School in Van Meter, Iowa. And I also work with Stick Together as the community leader and just somebody who champions libraries and schools and gives lots of great ideas. And I'm so happy that I get to be here with Brianna Kua, who also works with me at Stick Together, and she's also my daughter. So I'm really lucky that I get to work with her. Hi, my name is Brianna Kua. Um, I'm the owner of Engage Media Solutions, and I get to work to, with Stick Together as their director of digital marketing and brand communications. Thanks, Bri. So the first thing that we just asked you to do as you come in, I know some people are probably still coming in. We have a great crowd today. It's just so awesome to see that there's over 60 of us here today sharing. So as you come in, please put where you're from. And even if you want to say what you do within your school community or the weather too, it would be great. I just saw that Cami said that it's very, very cold. So it's, it's fun to see fun and also kind of like we're really excited for summer when we look at all these messages, but feel free to add anything like that that you want to into the chat as well. And just a little reminder where our webinar, we're going to go for about 45 minutes. We'll have time for your questions at the end, but if you have questions as we're going today, please put them into the chat because Bree is watching the chat and so she'll be able to either keep those until the end or even Tom and I, if one of us is not presenting and we see something, we'll help with that too. And everybody will receive a recording afterwards. And so if you see something or want to share this with other people within your communities, you'll be able to share that as well. Today, there's also three chances to win. We are not right now working on a virtual sticker board. And so that's going to be a really fun way to win with that final pixel giveaway. Also, there's the let's all stick together giveaway, which I'm going to tell about in a minute. And then there's a feedback form giveaway at the end. And so there are three different ways that you can win. But the let's all stick together giveaway, one lucky attendee who posts a screenshot from the webinar using the hashtag let's stick together and follows by stick together. Today by 11.59 p.m. Central will be chosen to win a standard size sticker poster kit, puzzle face, or a virtual sticker board basic plan. So those are great giveaways too that we're excited to share. Like I just said, please use the chat for questions. And then when we are done, we'll make sure that we have time 
for your questions too, that maybe you're thinking about as we go today. And I know you're going to have lots of things to ask Tom and ideas that he's going to give you because Tom is one of my favorite people to hear his ideas, especially around libraries and how he uses nonfiction. And it was fun because when we were at AASL, we went to, I was at the Stick Together booth and just watching what everybody was doing and talking to people. And Tom was one of the people that had happened to come to the booth. And I was so excited for him to see Puzzle Face and to talk to Sylvia from Stick Together about Puzzle Face more. And I knew at that moment that he was going to take it back to his library and do something amazing. And so that's why I just had to have him on today. And I can't wait to hear what you have to share, Tom. So I'll let you take it from here and I'll run the slides for you. You just let me know when you want me to turn them. Sounds good. Thanks, Shannon. Um, thanks everybody for joining us all today. And let me just take a moment to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Tom Bober. I'm a school librarian in a K through five school in the suburbs of St. Louis, Missouri. I'm also our district library coordinator. We're a rather small district. And like Shannon said, I was at uh, AASL and of course stopped by the Stick Together booth because I love the product and saw for the first time Puzzle Face. And instantly I was, in fact, I'm surprised Shannon saw me because I was off in the corner practicing making new Puzzle Face entries to see what can it do? How does it work? And I could not wait to get it back to my school. I think within days we used it and now we've got a full set of, I think we've got four or five different puzzle faces that we use. So when we've got a large, a full class in there, we've got groups making it. But I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment as far as how we've used it so far this year uh, and things that I think about when I'm using puzzle face and incorporating it into kind of that bigger look at, uh, in this case, history and also literature. Let's go ahead and go to that next slide, if you wouldn't mind. So if you haven't seen Puzzle Face yet, what it is is a really amazing product. Uh, I am brand new to it, but I'm going to tell you my experiences with it. And what it is is a 300-piece puzzle that you can essentially configure into limitless numbers of faces. And I'm gonna show you a little bit how to do that. But when I saw this, the first thing I thought of is how would this work with historical photographs? How would this look with black, old black and white photographs of individuals? And if that were the case, how can I then bring that into what my students and I are already doing with histor history, looking at history, looking at literature? How can this be a part of all of that? So you can see here, this was actually the first puzzle that we made. Um, this is Shirley Chisholm, if you don't know her. She was the first uh, Black woman to run for president of a major uh, political party in the United States, and as well as a whole lot of other accolades. There's been a lot of uh, nonfiction picture books that have come out uh, about her in the last few years, and she's been somebody that I just thought had been enamored with. So we do work with Shirley Chisholm. We talk about Shirley Chisholm, and I thought, she let's see what this puzzle looks like for her. You can take a look at it right here in the original photograph that I used. But let's go ahead and go to the next slide, and I'll tell you a little bit more, more about kind of how Puzzle Face works, how I set it up, and uh, what the process is. It's amazingly easy, which is something that I love. So the first thing that I, when I do this is I'm looking for a historical photograph. Now, Shannon, I bet you don't know who this photograph is, uh, who this is in this photograph. This is uh, Fanny Farmer. She actually popularized uh, back in the early 20th century, I believe it was, or maybe late 19th century, popularized standard size measurements in cooking and baking. So before people were kind of just mixing together spoonfuls and handfuls and different amounts of sugars and flours and everything else. And Fanny Farmer realized that cooking and baking was more of a science and standardized measurements or popularized the standardization of measurements. Her cookbook was uh, before Julia Child's cookbook, kind of the cookbook to go to. So she is someone that I follow. I love historical cooking and baking stuff. So here's a picture of her. There's actually a picture book about Fanny Farmer coming out uh, early in 2024. So here's my photograph. And then I go on to, on my phone, 
uh, onto Stick Together's website. And it's really easy to just navigate to this puzzle face page right here where you can click to upload a portrait. I've saved that historical photo to my photo library on my phone already, and I upload it. And from there, you get this side by side where you have the actual image and then you get the what approximately the puzzle, puzzle face image is going to look like. One thing that I love about this is you can pinch and zoom and reconfigure the image to get kind of the perfect look for what you're going for. So one thing from a historical standpoint and from a, an analysis, an image analysis standpoint that I was looking for with this particular puzzle face with my students was I wanted them to see that cup. Even if they didn't know exactly what it was, I didn't want just the face for this one with Fanny Farmer. I wanted that cup in there. So I was able to pinch and zoom uh, to get that cup in there and get that configuration. And, and basically what, and I'm not the, the I, I've never spoken to Sylvia about the kind of all the methods behind this, but you get this beautiful 300 piece uh, set of puzzle pieces, which all of these different sepia tones, and essentially it mixes and matches them in the best configuration to give you that puzzle that you're going to get. You can see uh, to the right there, then you get uh, the image key. And that's what your students are going to use. It's what my students use to create their puzzle face. And each one is a little bit different. Now I'm going to say one thing about this image key that I have done on my later puzzle faces that I've had my students create. You'll notice in the upper right hand corner, it gives you a little thumbnail of what the actual image is. I always clip that off. I don't want them to see what that actual image is. So I clip it off. Um, it makes it a little challenging for me then to remember who it is. So I make myself a little note on the back, uh, but I clip that off so my students don't get a chance to see what that final product is going to going to look like. Um, let's go ahead and go to the next slide, if we could, please. So once you have your image key, the next thing that I always I've been doing with my students is to actually set up the puzzle face area. So we have a set of tables in our library that we all come and sit at. And like I said, I've got four or five, I can't remember now, puzzle faces. So this is going to be set up on multiple tables. Now, depending on the amount of time you have, I found a few things to be really amazingly helpful. If you are like me and you're a little more limited on some of your, on your library time, the library visits with certain classes, grouping those colors of puzzle pieces together for your students ahead of time wonderful, really helps them find the pieces much more quickly. I have even, with some of my younger students, put those puzzle pieces then, when I've had time, in number order. That makes it even quicker for them to put together those puzzle pieces. I personally like to tape down my image key so it doesn't get turned around and around and around because the orientation of those puzzle pieces, the puzzle pieces fit together no matter which way you turn them, but so it becomes important to see uh, which way it's directed. So I like my image key to kind of stay in one spot. And what I've started to do is actually pit, print out two uh, image keys and put them at either end of the table so that students can get to them a little bit easier. And then one thing that you can see on the upper left with the small thumbnail of the image key that I had there is you can see that it's actually split into six different segments. So often if I've got groups, I'll have students essentially build a segment instead of just trying to go from corner to corner, which is what I initially started to do. I just have them build the puzzle in segments. So each one of them is responsible for their own segment. If I have less than six students in a group, then I have uh, the students who finish early start on the last segment or two for that particular puzzle. And like I said, uh, since you have six segments, we've got, you, you can do this with groups of six or less, works really, really well. Uh, I've done it usually groups of three to six is what I've always had with my students. And I really love the dynamics of them working together in that capacity. Let's go ahead and go to that next slide, please. So one way that I love uh, using Puzzle Face so far is for something for students to do while I'm doing a nonfiction read aloud. So in this example here, I was reading aloud from this book, The Great and Only uh, Barnum, that's by Candace Fleming. Uh, if you know her, you know the great kind of long, longer form nonfiction that she puts out that's in this case, case great for our upper elementary students. She also writes things that are great for YA students. And while I was reading this book and I picked particularly a passage that was 
kind of showing all of the grandiose dynamics of P.T. Barnum, my students, as you can see, this here's a group of four that are working together to put together uh, this puzzle. And I had other students at other tables that were doing the same thing. Um, for me, this is was going to be what I meant this to be was a really interesting way for students to do something physical while they were actually listening to the book. I have students all the time come up to my library for lunch and they eat while I read aloud to them. And this was an opportunity for them to do something else physical while I was reading aloud to them. I've also had them come in and just do drawings or just do other physical things. So they're not just sitting. Uh, this was a chance to do something that was really directly connected with that book. So I'm reading all about P.T. Barnum. I'm reading all about um, the grandiose uh, antics that, that he kind of accomplished through this portion of his life from the passage uh, that I was reading. And at the end of my reading time, which was about 20 minutes, uh, we were able to then flip over our puzzle face and actually see the person that we've been talking about that whole time. Now you can see that the image that they finished with looks like, and I, I'm not 100% sure it's the exact image, but it looks very close to the uh, image on the back or that's on the book, but of course is greatly covered up by text. So students get a chance to build and move and uh, fidget in a way, in a very purposeful and intentional way, and then have a product for when they're finished. Uh, they are as excited as I am to see it flip over because I typically don't build the puzzle first uh, either to see what it looks like. I just get a chance to see what it's going to look like from the image key that I end up creating on my phone. So we're all excited to pick that up. And the another thing I'll say about this is that you're not going to know unless you handle it, unless you use this product, is that these puzzle pieces stick together so well that you can just pick this puzzle up by its corners and move it from table to table once it's all put together. So it moves and it flips over extremely nicely. Uh, my students were able to flip it and handle it. And I had no concerns about it kind of falling apart or pieces falling off or anything like that. Let's go ahead and go to the next slide. So I think that when we're talking about nonfiction and specifically and, and history uh, specifically, and puzzle face, I think you really have ultimately a couple of really nice options if you're wanting to incorporate this along with uh, some type of nonfiction literature. And that is one, to do what I just suggested, which is uh, to read a longer form historical nonfiction book while your students are doing a puzzle face, or potentially as a precursor to a historical nonfiction, or to read a nonfiction long form book, excuse me, or as a precursor to a historical nonfiction picture book, because of course we want them to see those great illustrations that are in the book. So doing it prior to kind of get a, uh, just like you might, or just like I do sometimes put a historical image up and we take a look at that historical image and we talk about it and we look at it and then we experience the picture book. I wanted to give you a few different resources that uh, might be helpful to you. If you want to kind of see what else is out there around nonfiction, historically based picture books, I've got a series of blog posts. Now I haven't done them for a couple of years because I just got done with a big writing project. So that took me away from the blog post. I'm hoping to pick it back up this year. We'll see if that works um, on Knowledge Quest. And so you're welcome to, to access those Knowledge Quest articles. They are all about different historically based nonfiction picture books paired with different primary sources. And I'll talk more about why that seems to fit together in my mind really nicely with Stick Together in just a moment as well. If you're looking for something a little more current, if you feel like you've got a really good uh, um, curation of, of historically based nonfiction picture books, but maybe you haven't seen what's come out lately, I also put a link to Betsy Bird's 31 Days, 31 Lists. Uh, she has one of her lists for this past year is unique biographies for kids. And so this gives us an opportunity to connect unique individuals find images of them, and then use Puzzle Face along with that particular piece of literature. And if you're just searching on Google, you can just search 31 Days, 31 List 2023, and then search for her uh, for that particular list. Let's go ahead and go to the next slide, Shannon. Thank you. Uh, one other resource that I think is really great that's on Stick Together's website is some of the curricular connections that they have available. So if you're on their website, I've got it just kind of pointed out right here. You can go to resources, 
curriculum connections, and then specifically to social studies. Now, I would like to look at these as kind of like a jumping off point. Where, where, what are some basic ideas that I can use to kind of incorporate stick together with, in this case, social studies? And I love the two examples that are on the website because to go back to primary sources, both of these are really incredible primary sources. So one of them is to include a QR code that links MLK's I Have a Dream speech to the I Have a Dream sticker poster. And the other one is to share the Statue of Liberty uh, National, National Park Service virtual tour uh, as a, I, I consider that a primary source when students complete the related poster. And I think that idea of incorporating the uh, stick together product, whether it's a, a poster or whether it's puzzle face along with a primary source, I think is a really wonderful idea. Um, if we can go to that next slide, I kind of took that Statue of Liberty idea with along with a book that I love and that actually is making the rounds around our, our library again really well amongst our second graders right now. And that is, oh, I lost it. Hold on one second, Shannon. I lost my screen. Let me get back to that. Okay. I love this book too. Okay. If, if you people, can see that, you can see that, can't you though? I can, you can, you can, I can just like help you guide. Okay. So yeah, someone, something took over my it's thing okay. here, So let me just jump back. Yeah. So basically um, I'm looking at it on my phone. So I know what the screen looks like. Uh, so essentially what I think is a great idea is to do exactly what was suggested. I love the pairing of the uh, National Park Service virtual tour along with that stick together Statue of Liberty thing. I love it because, and, and this is the stick together products in general, we were seeing it happen with the, the stick together, virtual stick together that we were seeing at the beginning of this webinar is that as those pieces are going into place, students are starting to recognize patterns within the image, starting to make guesses about what it is. And as they're getting that idea of what it is, my, my guess was the capital as well for the image that we were working on, all of a sudden we're activating everything that the student knows hopefully about, or a lot of what the student knows about whatever that item is. So whatever they happen to know about the US Capitol, whatever they know about the Statue of Liberty. And of course we can go in where they can be completely cold and we can see what they know about the Statue of Liberty, or we can actually front load a little bit of information a week before, two weeks before, and then we can come in with that stick together and all of a sudden it's gonna reactivate all of that. I love that idea, that slow reactivation as those stick together pieces are rebuilding, are, are being built and put together. And so putting that together with something like Her Right Foot by Dave Eggers, um, I think is another way to dig a little bit deeper. I love the idea of posing some questions as students are working with stick together, the stick together piece, and then after when they are interacting with the, the historically based picture book or a primary source or whatever it is. So here's just an example of it on this slide is what do you know about the Statue of Liberty? What has been kind of reactivated for you? And then what does the Statue of Liberty represent or stand for? And so I can, it's almost like a little pre and post that I can activate all of that information through the stick together process. And then we can revisit that after we've fully done the stick together piece, maybe done some things with some primary sources, interacted with the historically based picture book and revisit those questions and look at how that information has changed uh, and grown through all of those different activities. So I think this combination of using stick together to either have a physical activity when doing auditory processing in the case of puzzle face or doing stick together to activate prior knowledge and then question students and give them other elements to act to interact with and then to revisit some of those questions is just a beautiful way that some of the stick together products fold into some of the work that my students and I are already doing with our historical thinking in our library. I love it. I think that it's, it's so neat to see like how, and I agree, like just finding something, a topic that, you know, maybe in the library that we want to spend even just a day on or send something to the teachers like yesterday during, you know, we we're now talking about Martin Luther King day all week and, and last week too, and giving them these little like nuggets of ways that they can tie things together 
is something that is I'm so grateful for and is so neat about stick together too. You have a question, Tom. Um, so they wonder what you do with the puzzle faces What's once they've been created. Do they take them apart and use them again? Or do you display different ones for a bit and then take them apart? So what we've been doing right now is we've been taking them back apart because the way that our classes go, we end up having classes come in after classes. And so we'll need to refresh them to get them ready for the next class. So I typically haven't had an opportunity to do any displays yet, but uh, I think that that's an awesome idea, especially if we're displaying that along with the book or that along with the primary source. Uh, I think it makes like a really cool talking point. And the other thing it does really nicely, if I have the opportunity to do this, is I think it's a really great way then when the students come in a week later or however many days later to revisit that particular topic, if we've got those visuals ready for them to take a look at again. I love it. Thank you so much for all of these ideas. And I have to give a little shout out to Tom's book. If you guys haven't seen this, okay. it's the Elementary Educator's Guide to Primary Sources. Amazing book, my go-to for when I am working with the teachers and the kids around primary sources and he just everything he puts out there is amazing so thank you so much for sharing today shannon can i can i drop uh can i plug another book Absolutely. that's coming out next month yeah. i've got another book if, if you really get into the idea of using primary sources and either picture books or literature in general i have a book coming out next month towards the end of february um that is all about that. And so uh, it comes out through Bloomsbury. Uh, and if you just search my name on Amazon, you're going to see it. It's like the second or third thing that pops up. Uh, but it's all about primary sources and literature. And some of the examples that I shared today fold very nicely into what's in this book, if you want to do a little exploration of that. I love it. Congrats. That's exciting. Thank you so much. Thanks. Such good ideas. Keep sharing them too. So I am excited because I am going to also share some ideas on how to tie in nonfictionistic together. And the first one, if you haven't seen the Eric Carl posters, the sticker posters, they are just beautiful and amazing. And I love how we can tie them into STEAM through nonfiction books and online resources and other activities. And so just to show you some of them, what they look like, these are the six that they have. And I love finding not only the art Eric Carl books, but also then tying it into like a Caterpillar book, maybe that we have in Capstone Interactive. And so when we have our posters up, we're always trying to think about um, how we can like extend the learning. Like if we have something and it's maybe an Eric Car Carl, or maybe it's like a historical place or something, or it can be something that is really kind of a springboard for other learning that the kids might be doing. And so in second grade, when they were learning about butterflies and caterpillars, we had this one up. And then they could also go to the choice board where they could read eBooks and they could learn in Pebble Go, they could create in pixel art. And so, so many things that we could bring together so they could then, you know, learn about what they were making then on that sticker board. Another one is the, now I'm drawing a blank at what that one is called. It's called Brown Bear, Brown Bear. I was just looking at that because I was thinking finding a black bear book, but Brown Bear, Brown Bear, what do you see? This was one that we did with our kindergartners. And it was so fun because this was the first sticker poster that we did and they did an amazing job putting it together. But then on the side, we also had just a um, choice board where they could learn more on Pebble Go and through eBooks. And again, other little activities that they might do. And we even included pixel art. And I'll talk about that in a minute as well. But I have put together also where you can go to get these two and you don't have to reinvent the wheel. If you want to use these as well, you can just click there and you can get the two Eric Carl science theme choice boards. The nice thing about them is that when you go to that choice board, what you're going to do is you're going to get a link to make a copy 
And I put a slide in here. If you have ever used like the choice boards that I create or other people create, what you want to do with a choice board is make sure that you go to file and then to publish to the web. When you publish to the web, then you're going to get a link that you share with your students. And so the first thing you'll do is push a copy. You can change anything up that you want to on that and then publish to the web and then share that link. That's one of the most common questions when we're using choice boards that we get from our teachers and others who are using them. We also have some other choice boards that we have made and you'll find them just as Tom was talking about all the resources that we have, but under resources, there is a choice board, like a little drop down that has all of them. And when you click on one of them, it will then open up into whatever choice board you have clicked on. It will push a copy again, so you make the changes. This one is about the United States, and so a great one, too, to pair up even with that virtual sticker board that we did in the beginning, and you can then publish it to the web and share that with your kids, and so really easy to use that to be able to not have to reinvent the wheel and use some of these activities, too, and so I hope you guys check those out. And then we also have these ones for winter. These are perfect right now for all the weather that we're going through across the country. And in this slide, just like all of them, if you click on the image or whatever it is, you'll be able to grab that link either to the blog post or it will take you directly to those resources on the Stick Together site. So you can use those too. This is one that I did last week. And because of all the weather, our kids, we knew that we weren't going to school for a few days. So another great thing to share, even with your kids, if they're at home. And so this can be something that they can participate in by learning, listening to the book, doing a little research with some nonfiction um, text, and then they're able to make something with pixel art. So another really fun one. Probably one of my favorite things that we have done with Stick Together with Pixel Art is our community Stick Together garden that we did for our second grade science. And our teachers, they came to me and wanted an idea about something to do around the kind of culmination of them learning about plants and vegetables and fruits and gardens. And so I chose this book, Miguel's Community Garden, and we then use Stick Together Pixel Art to make their own community gardens. And it's so great because with pixel art, you can take the images that they make and you can use stickers or even just print them off in color. And so I'm going to show you how we did that. But on this trace board, and this again is share, this is something that you could make a copy and add even your own things that you have. I found just some books and Pebble Go articles, and I put it together so the kids could have some choice in what they wanted to do, but then they also could, when they were ready, they could go on then to that pixel art and use that and use the link to be able to create their own, whatever they were making for the garden. And so they first did some research and they drew out what they were going to make in pixel art. And they did such a great job. We had some books going around and they used the things online and they were so excited. And then they went to the Stick Together Pixel Art site. And this is a site that I think is so much fun. We've used it in so many different ways and this is free. And it's so fun because now with Pixel Art, we used to have to save them and then we'd put them onto a Padlet. But now all you have to do is when you sign up, you actually get a link that is specific to your dashboard. And so this link is something that I share with my kids, like in Google Classroom. And so as they are creating, or you can even just add a link like I did to the little choice board, they then create, then they save their work. And so they would just click on a color, fill in the pixel squares of the grid, put their name in their last initial and then save their work. And that work then goes right on to that little dashboard that you have for pixel art. 
So it is so easy. It's so fun. I put this up in the front of the classroom as they're creating so they can even see what everyone else in their class or even like multiple classes. A lot of times I'll do a project like this one with, with our whole second grade. And then those come up on there as they're creating. And then what you do is you can either print it as a worksheet. And so that's what they would fill in. Like if you had either leftover stickers, or you can also purchase just the stickers from stick together. You can also just print them or even use them digitally. And so sometimes I might use them even in something that is online and put it together. And with their community garden, what we did is we printed these off. So then the kids could use stickers to bring their creations to life. And so they did such a good job. They had so much fun. It probably took them once they had their like vegetable or their flower and we gave them the worksheet. It probably took them about 45 minutes, I bet, to sticker than that sticker poster that they had. So it was really fun to bring those together. And then we put them all up in a community garden. And so really super fun to use that. And the kids, I loved what they created. Every single one of them was so different and kids are creative. And so it's really been fun to see what they do. One thing that I thought would be fun today, if you haven't tried um, the pixel art, if you would like to give it a try, you can go to this bit.ly and maybe Brie can pop that into the chat too. But like even giving them a simple direction, like creating your favorite historical figure or like yesterday we didn't have school because of the weather, but if we would have, I did a choice board for MLK day and we could have the kids like all create Martin Luther King, or you could president's day is coming up. It's inventors day tomorrow. And so they could create like an inventor. And so you can give them a link and you can put it in their Google classroom, or you can even just have it be um, a QR code. You can make it like a bit.ly like I did, but you can give it a try just by creating your favorite historical figure. And what I will do afterwards, because I don't want to take too much time because we'll get, um, looking at all of the great things that you guys are creating, but I will post some and see what we can create. So if you want to try it out, please do. And then that goes right to my dashboard. So it's so easy to be able to collect those and get them and then use them however you want to. So again, I love to use them even digitally and make things and make collages and put them together. And so lots of different opportunities for that. Our fourth graders are getting ready for their wax museum again. And last year it was so fun because they created in pixel art, whatever their person was for the wax museum. And they always need some extra time as they're presenting that day. And so we had all kinds of stickers and the kids made then their pixel art historical figure from the wax museum. So that was a really fun activity to do. The next thing is the monthly stick together virtual sticker board calendar. And this is something that Brianna puts together every month. She does such a great job finding all these dates that we wouldn't know about if we didn't have this. And so I love it because I can go here and see all kinds of different ways that I can use then the virtual sticker boards and the virtual sticker board is what we did in the beginning. And so you'll be able to get to that too. And it's so nice because they have stick together has upgraded the virtual sticker board experience. And so I love this because now our whole school has the community plan. And this is something that if you have questions, I would recommend just reaching out to stick together. You get a really steep discount when you get the community plan. And then all of our teachers, I send the calendar out to them right before like the first of the month start. And the teachers love it because they're using these like at the beginning or end of the day, or they're using it to introduce a lesson or a brain break. And it's really great, again, to tie into different themes that we have. If it's historical, like Martin Luther King, or if it's Penguin Awareness Day, all kinds of ways that we can then 
use this within our curriculum too. And so you can check out more there too. I love it. So as you can see, there's so many ways to bring nonfiction to life to stick together. And we can't wait to see and hear what you do with your students too. And so if you have questions, please put them in the chat or something to um, fill out. Like if you have something that you want to share, we would be happy to hear about that too. And so just put it in the chat and we'll make sure to either answer or get back to you too um, later. But if you have questions anytime, feel free to reach out to us. And I'm always happy to help if you see something on my blog that I've shared and written about, and you have questions about how to use something, um, don't be afraid to ask because I'm always, always happy to help. So I'm just going to pause for a minute and see if there's any questions. And Brianna, you can either tell me if we've missed some or... Um, oh, I saw Sylvia just answered. So we did get a question asking for the maximum number of students that can create on the dashboard, the pixel art, and there is no limit. Um, and then we also got a question, is the community plan only for virtual, for virtual sticker boards? Yes. Uh, I love the mystery puzzle face that is a staff member. I have heard people doing that and that is so much fun. I love that. I've been brainstorming how to do that because we have this like case when you first walk into our elementary, that would be so fun to, to show. Um, I love Jan's questions. She said, you guys are blowing my mind. Where do I start? <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah, it's so fun. So much fun. But keep, keep the questions coming if you think of anything else. And I want to share just a few resources. This might help on where to start also. But we're excited because we have our February webinar already planned. And this is going to be a great one. Our guest is our dear friend, Kathy, who always has so many ideas on how to use technology in the classroom and in the library and it's going to be 10 of our top digital tools to use to stick together. So Kathy and I will have just tons of ideas on how to kind of app smash things together, which I think is one of the funnest things to do with tools like this. So I'm really excited about that. But if you have questions and you wanna check some of this out, the first place to start would be at the Stick Together site. And you can find that at letstictogether.com. And on there, you'll see the sticker poster kits, pixel art, the virtual sticker boards, puzzle face, like all kinds of ways to just really, you know, find just like the ideas that we shared today about how you can use this no tech, low tech, and with technology. And I think that is one of the best parts. And our kids at Van Meter have loved it. It doesn't matter. I work in a school with preschool to 12th grade kids, and we're all in one building. And it's fun because you might find one in a hallway or in a Spanish room or an activity even in our preschool. And so this is great for all age levels. And no matter what they're learning about, it's just a really, really great product to use with so many different um, subjects and ways that we are teaching with our kids. The resources also on the website are wonderful. And we talked about a few of them, but you can find them under resources. Lots of different ways to use them. And these curriculum co connections are just so fun to just really find ideas on how to use them, no matter what you might be teaching or if you're collaborating as a librarian or maybe you're working um, with technology, you can find ideas too. There are also these fun stick together signs that Brianna created. I love them. And it's nice because if you have a poster up or an activity, you can then make a little stick together area or corner in your classroom or outside your library. And I put together this year, this was so helpful because we have a lot of stickers at our school. And so I just took an old file and I made it then into sticker storage, put a sign on the front and I have a couple of these and it's been so helpful to the teachers and the kids because we can pass these around easily, but it really is a great way to keep it organized. So 
just like all the other resources that we shared, if you click on these slides, you'll be able to then grab that poster too. But we always love to see like how people use it. I think there are so many great ways, you know, how they organize them, how they keep them up, how they introduce them, or maybe even display them afterwards. And so if you check out ideas, even like with the hashtag or on the stick together, um, like social or Facebook, you'll be able to see ideas too. So really fun to see those. There are some new ones. I'm so excited because I just passed these out last week and I know our kids are going to love seeing them come together. Can't decide if the Corgi or the cat with glasses is my favorite, but I love them all. And the colors are so nice because they are, they're different. I think these are just really special and unique. And so the new ones, you'll be able to order those right now too. Another great place to learn even more is on the YouTube and you can follow Stick Together on YouTube to see all of the webinars. This is the second year, second season for our webinars. So there are a lot of them. And as always in all of the webinars and events that we have, we have a professional development certificate. And so at the bottom, you can get that a little feedback, you get your certificate. And then that is also another way that you can win. And so you can fill that out by 11.59 p.m. Central tonight, and you'll be entered in to win that contest too. And so we're so glad that you joined us. I have so many ideas now too. I took notes because every time I listen to Tom, I get ideas. And so thank you, Tom, for joining us. And thank you, Brianna, for everything that you do and create. And all of you, it's just really good to be part of our Stick Together community. So thank you. And we can't wait to see you again um, next month. So reach out if you need us and if you have things to share. And we can't wait to see how you're using Stick Together too. Shannon, thanks so much for having me. And I got some great ideas from you too. And what an active chat. I mean, it's like, what a great group today. So thank you for including me in this. Yes, I love it. Thanks everybody. It was really, it was really, really fun. Great way to kick off the year. We'll hang on for a couple of minutes if anyone has any more questions for us. I'm just going to put this up again too. If anybody needs it, you can grab that. Yeah, I hope that we get to see this chat because I want to read it. It's hard to keep up on the chat when you're presenting. <laughs> I'm always worried that I'm going to like do something to the screen. It's going to leave. <laughs> um, here's a question. Other than virtual days, how do you use your choice boards? Oh my gosh. So we don't even use them in virtual days. We don't have virtual days at our school actually. Um, but we use them in our classrooms, our teachers share them. If it's even for like, we have this, we're the Van Meter Bulldogs. So we have bulldog time at the end of the day. And our kids use them a lot during that time. Like I think some of the kids might get on the bus a little early or they use it. And then we use it to tie into all kinds of things in the curriculum, especially the ones that we shared today, like the plants and the community garden, like that was part of what they were doing in science. And so we're always trying to find ways to make, I think, bringing resources together easier for kids. And also it helps the teachers like know the best resources that I can help them as a librarian, bring them together in a nice curated, organized way. And our kids love them. So we started using them during COVID and that's when it was like a huge aha for me kind of on how to use them. And it has just really turned into a way that we use them in our teaching and learning. And it's been so fun. I, I have more collaboration with teachers through the last like three years since the pandemic than ever before. And a lot of it um, ironically is around like how we're curating things and sharing things and teaching um, just even better, I think, from these resources that we have that we bring together. Good question. Another question was, can we share Shannon's choice board with our students? Yes, yes. And you can like, when you push a copy to yourself, 
like change anything you want. Like some of you might not have Pebble Go, or maybe you have different eBooks that you want to share. Um, you can put anything in there, but if I share something on my blog and I blog at just the library voice.com, if I share something and a lot of times, like I'll partner with capstone, for example, and in the summertime, like we have one where we offer, like, I think it's like 120, like eBooks are open in the summer. We just had one for the winter. And so if I'm sharing those things and things are open and free, that means they're free for everyone to use. And so um, feel free to use them, especially with your kids. And then we got the question if this was being recording and it is, and you will get the recording tomorrow in your email. I love it. Yeah, people are awesome today. It's because we're all home. We're like every, like half of us were in snow days. And so we're like, in, we're in the mood to learn. <laughs> oh, there's so many good questions. Yeah, somebody just said, I, we have a snow day without the snow in Dallas. I saw that because I go to Irving next week and I was thinking in my head, like, gosh, I hope it's not a snow day. <laughs> Weather day in New Orleans too. Yeah, our son, um, who is the freshman at Iowa, they didn't have school today because it's too cold. And so we need a little turnaround or a vacation <laughs> thanks everybody thank you so much and please reach out um follow stick together online and share your ideas that you're doing too um just using the hashtag let's stick together so we're really happy to have you and can't wait for the next one. And we hope to see everybody back in February.